the head of this corporation walks in and he looks at me and says hello dr shilpa where's your team and i said so i work alone in country i'm the only person who reaches out to kids and he sat down he did not say anything for a whole minute he looked at me and said shilpa 500000 children under 5 are going blind in india you just one girl you just one person how many places will you visit you're never going to get this done he stood up and walked away i was not sure whether he was coming back um he didn't if you went back and met with that guy again what would you tell him thank you i thought i was afraid of snakes the fact that they can completely remove their skin really freaked me out being a surgeon is the top most that you could achieve once you're in medicine you literally mint a lot of money i mean that's the word that most people will use so when i decided to leave surgery and get into public health a lot of my peers ridiculed me questioned me temporary insanity i remember one of my friends said they are there for a reason they are there to tell you that hey it's not possible but it's not possible for them i lost all of my friends during that time all of my friends why am i afraid of snakes the snake is able to let go of its skin and start afresh every year maybe i should also try and doing that there is a difference between clinical medicine and preventative medicine in clinical medicine a patient goes to a doctor when there is something wrong in preventative medicine i will go to a patient even before they know that something is wrong So uh, very early on I remember visiting a brick field in um, Kolkata there were these five kids among 20 who were already blind they had the white spots on their cornea and that shocked me to the core I had never even heard of such a thing before there was no documentation of so many children being blind in the same place when a child goes blind because of vitamin A deficiency the transparent part of the eye which is called the cornea literally melts because there's not enough vitamin A to hold the corneal structure together and i remember this one kid who was 3 years old and i kept looking at her face trying to catch a glimpse of her eyes but she kept shying away because i think she was being bullied by the other kids shruti you have come huh? i just wanted to check with you about the shipping list that we are sending out now I'm Vinay Bhatte. I'm Shilpa's brother. The unofficial uh, uh, employee of whatever she does. I always run around, and whenever she is in trouble, I have to help her out. She can't uh, see anyone in pain. That's why she is able to do her job so well. She wanted to be a doctor since forever. Our father was blind, so we understand what blindness is all about. for us it's a very emotional thing so for a child who hasn't even seen the world and unable to do it 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 pains a lot so all of these photographs have been shot by my dad he used to be a photographer and this is what he did every weekend bring out the camera and make me pose as you can see i'm very comfortable in front of the camera i think i was trying to go for the jail look <laughs> I always have the sense of I couldn't prevent his blindness but through my current work I have an opportunity to prevent blindness in someone else. However, it's just the fact that these children are located in such hard to reach areas. It could be an urban slum. they could be migrants who have just come into a city and not counted by the local health authorities we knew um that there was a problem and we knew what the solution was 
uh, it's a simple intervention. Two capsules a year of high dose vitamin A can prevent blindness in children under five. So we had two dots, but we didn't know how to connect them. Essentially, if I know that the challenge is in in Raipur, I go to Raipur, uh, reach 500 kids over there with vitamin A. And then I come back. Then I know of another place in Orissa, in the tribal belts of Orissa. We reach out over there, support 1,000 kids under five, and then I again come back. Every time I went out to a new area, I would speak to them about the intervention, they would think about it, and then they would get back saying, we don't want to do this. It was just me going to a new area and coming back. Maybe ensuring one dose, but that wouldn't really help. We needed someone to keep doing this program again and again and again till the child was five years of age. I was talking to the auto guy. I was talking to taxi drivers, people on the plane, people in the washroom. And most of them would take the card, look at it and say, interesting, we'll get back to you. And it's tough. It's tough because even right now I know there are kids in some of the states where they're not getting vitamin A. And you can do only so much. I was visiting a deaf and mute school in Patna and there were these five-year-olds who couldn't hear or speak and they were being taught how to make their tongues and their mouths to uh, make a sound. And there was this young girl. The teacher would repeat a different sound every time and she would just keep on saying k. The teacher would say f and she would say k. The teacher would say b and she would say k. Just repeat the same sound again and again and again. But she was doing it with so much enthusiasm and so much determination, I couldn't stop myself from crying for 15 minutes. Shilpa, how dare you feel disheartened by one failure? How dare you? Look at this girl. She's five. She can't speak. She cannot hear. And yet, look at the enthusiasm in which she's trying to learn. This was not something I was going to be able to do alone. I think not many people know about the angry Shilpa, how angry she can get. Once uh, when we were children, I think she, I don't know what the incident was, but she got angry and she just uh, smashed her window plane. She just smashed it with her bare hands. That's why my father never allowed her to learn karate. She wanted to learn martial arts, my father never allowed it. <laughs> he was always afraid she would kick someone's ass. One of my friends had a friend who knew of a mother's group in Nagaland. I had not even heard of Nagaland at that point of time. <laughs> so Nagaland is the most eastern state in the country of India. It borders with Myanmar. There's no motorable road to reach some of the villages. They literally had to walk up to a few villages for three days even. They were initially very apprehensive, but we trained them within a month and they have been reaching about 60 to 70,000 children under five now for the past seven years. These were not doctors or even medical workers. It was a mother's group, um, all women in the most remotest part of the country. That was a surprise. And then from then on, things really started speeding up. Identifying local volunteers who would take the responsibility of saying, yes, we will sustain the program going forward. If you give us the proper tools uh, in terms of training, in terms of medicine, we will take it forward. And so more people joining this mission is actually what was important, without whom we would not have been able to reach the number of children we are reaching right now. And we are reaching 12.5 million children in India right now.
I think all of us have our stories. We just need to own up to our story. Why did I have to go through this pain of seeing my most beloved person go through blindness? I think that pain was meant so that I could understand my calling. You do get an understanding of why it's happening, why it's you, why it's you. Now I do understand why it's me. That's my story. Thank you for watching uh, this piece about Dr. Shilpa in India, and we made this for Giving Week. That's right. Yeah. Um, not only to highlight Dr. Shilpa and the amazing work that she's doing, but also to raise awareness for another organization called Doctors Without Borders. They go where no other groups go. They'll respond to um, natural disasters, uh, war victims, even disease. Doctors, nurses, logistical experts, over 30,000 of them in 60 different countries. And we just thought, man, what an incredible opportunity we have uh, especially during this holiday season, to raise awareness and money for a really worthy cause. And we mm -hmm. want to just encourage all of the Jew believers out there uh, to give. This will continue to, to be an opportunity for you guys to give well mm -hmm. into the Whenever new year. Whenever you're watching. Um, so whether it's $1 or $5, definitely want to encourage you guys to give. The other cool thing is when you donate, uh, your donation will be matched. So when you give $5, That's Doctors Without Borders will get $10. Thank you guys for hanging around and thank you for letting us do what we do and highlighting great people and great stories. And we, hopefully we can do a lot more. Stick around. We have a lot more videos for you guys that are good stuff. So we'll see you next time.